Chris the Carpenter here. Uh, this is the first video for, um, like, a first, like, official video for the CNC project, and it's wicked early in the morning or late at night. I don't know anymore. And, uh, gotta be quiet. This is the materials, uh, uh, video. This is just a quick overview of, uh, what I bought. Um, start with linear bearings. These are linear bearings. They got little slideys on them and these are uh, called fully supported linear bearings they got a they got a rib all the way down the length of them um, 20 millimeter 16 millimeter and 12 millimeter for the z-axis uh, 700 meter long 800 meter uh, mill, not meters millimeters long and uh, 300 millimeters long on the Z. Now I bought this as a kit. Um, it came with the uh, the ball screws. It also came, be very careful on eBay. Be sure you get these guys included in the kit. They're not in a lot of the kits. Um, these are the bearing blocks. Be sure those are included. Um, steppers were not part of that kit. So I got that, that. Um, oh, and the couplers. Um, for the motors. Also, these were these didn't fit my motors. The hole is too small. So um, be sure to put in the comments when you order to get the ones with the holes. Now, uh, what did I spend here? Uh, this is 570 bucks <laughs> sitting here, and um, I think basically you're going to have to get the um, the, uh, the all thread no matter what. And um, so I think I probably spent about, I don't know, 250 bucks, maybe 300 bucks on the rails. And in the long run, I think that's going to be money well spent where I'm not trying to rip a piece of MDF perfectly parallel and then put a chamfer on each side to put a piece of uh, aluminum angle iron for bearings to ride on and then trying to get those bearings the perfect width and tension them and all that shenanigans. Um, I think that the 250 bucks I spent for these guys, where basically I need to just set it down on a piece of steel, drill, tap some holes, and slam some screws in, um, I think it's going to be money well spent. Um, in addition to the fact that uh, you know these are like these two are the gantry pieces, so this will be the the gantry. And when I'm trying to parallel these with the deck. I think um, it's going to be very, very nice where I can I can get a dial indicator or a, you know a parallel or whatever I'm going to do, uh, space them off the deck properly, and then uh, go ahead and, and put the screws in, or even just put you know like we do in the cabinet world, uh, just the end screws, uh, so we have more screw up holes basically, so we can kind of fudge lodge it if we need to. So at any rate, um, almost six bills um, for glides and screws. These are my steppers. Do I have a light here? Maybe I do. I don't. Okay. Um, these are NEMA 23s. Actually, let's use this one. NEMA 23 refers to the size of this bolt pattern, the size of this face. Um, these are 425 ounce inches, and that's a measurement of torque. That's, right, is torque. And um, if you were to put an arm on this, which is exactly one inch from the center of this shaft, then in theory, uh, this motor could lift at the, a weight on the end of that shaft at one inch long of 425 ounces. If that little lever, that little arm sticking out was two inches, it could lift half that amount. So that's, that's the measure of torque. Now that torque is multiplied by the threading. Uh, it's mechanical advantage. You have to trade something to get something. So in this case, we have to spin it more times. We're going slower, basically, but we're getting more strength out of the deal. Uh, I purchased these as a kit. I bought three of them. Um, and then I got these, uh, the, I, I call them the black box controllers. I saw a lot of these in forums. They seem to be the standard. Uh, and then I got the big old honking silver power supply. And uh, those were a set. Oh, I'm sorry. And I got this uh, parallel board as well, uh, which we'll get into later. This is the control board, the breakout board. And uh, 
$370 bucks for these guys. Uh, a step up from this was another 200 bucks, and I just couldn't justify it. So, um, so yeah, a little shy of 300 bucks. Um, this is my steel. That's the bucket fixing the one leak in my roof. I put the new roof on, and I'm like that close to getting it dry. Uh, this is 065 tubing, uh, 16 gauge basically. Uh, some one inch, some inch and a half, uh, a little bit of angle irons and some flat stock. And um, I sure wish I had gotten two inch wide instead of inch and a half. What can you do? Um, this is about 200 bucks worth of steel. It comes in a stick. A stick is 20 two to 20 to 24 feet um, and you would generally order it by the stick uh, I get it delivered for free uh, not because I'm cool because it's just an awesome local company but um, but that's 220 bucks worth of steel and I think I'm probably gonna use about half of it on the mill and uh, half of what's left on the stand um, to, to set it on so there's that so that's that's the that's the major those are the majors that's that's basically the the whole mill here mdf 20 bucks a sheet 30 bucks a sheet whatever um but those are the major ones a little less than 600 a little less than 300 and 150 200 bucks in steel and that's that's it now uh as the guys in denver would say you've always got the little chingaderas you need to take you need to take a look at the chingaderas great guys i worked with in denver awesome and that's what these are little incidentals these are limit switches not much but it's uh, nickels and dimes to add up this is a few bucks ebay um, rotary switches for something else i'm going to do with this particular project a few bucks ebay um, and then probably this is the next big chunk of cash um, all in all, I have about probably 100, 125 bucks into this. This is the uh, the parts for the extruder for the 3D printer portion of the project. There's the extruder itself. But uh, but 100 bucks there. Um, good friend of mine is actually going to print the, the the parts I need, the print parts, and then um, uh, um, the stepper motor and the controller for this guy another 40 bucks and then I'm gonna to have to build a control circuit to actually regulate the temperature that's just free that's spare parts I have so um, realistically I probably got $200 in making this a 3d printer um, and I haven't bought a hot pad yet so that's another big chunk of cash um, a few more incidentals big red stop button <laughs> this was like six eight bucks this wasn't too bad just Search eBay, and um, my advice is click, uh, click buy it now, click lowest to highest, and a uh, price, um, and uh, and generally I go for free shipping if I can. I mean, it all usually averages out. It'll be two dollars free shipping or ninety nine cents and the dollar, you know, for shipping. But just keep your eye out so they don't screw you. Um, oh, and then I've got another fifty bucks, fifty two dollars in uh, nuts and bolts. Uh, I got these from my local independently owned hardware store um, just so I could check sizes and then unfortunately I had to buy the bulk. Well actually no, I had to, I'm buying the bulk from an American company in New York, Albany, um, and they're awesome. I get my stuff in like three days. Um, they've never had a screw up. They're polite. They're fantastic. Albany County. It's on the website. There's a link. Um, and so I was able to buy this stuff in bulk, but uh, I was also able to buy from an American company, so that's pretty cool. And then, um, and I think that's really basically it. Um, we'll hit anything else as it comes up, but that should basically be the overview of, um, of what I got. So, um, oh, shoot, sorry, one more. Um, outside in the, um, in the metal shop, in the outside shop, there's, uh, I've got like 70 bucks. Oh, I'm sorry, I can talk to you. I've got like uh, 70 bucks or so of uh, consumables, which are um, abrasive blades for the um, for the chop saw, the four, big 14 inch chop saw, and then grinding wheels, cutoff wheels, and flat discs for the, um, for the grinder. Uh, I bought a fresh roll of welding wire 
and I needed a tank of uh, argon CO2, so I got that. And then um, I went ahead and I splurged and I bought a new um, liner for my welder and a new tip and uh, I just kind of tidied up my welder. It's, it's, it's got some hours on it and it's about time. I thought it would be nice to have a nice fresh welder. Oh, and I bought clear, new clear things for my mask so I can actually see through my mask. Um, so, um, so, so there's the rundown. Um, just to finish out this video, what I'm doing tonight before anything else, I'm writing this epic blog post, my first post. Uh, that's uh, rocketbrandstudios.com. And, uh, ding! Rocketbrandstudios.com. And, uh, and then beyond that, I'm literally just staring at stuff. I'm laying it out like this and, um, and just holding parts up to parts and, uh, and just doing a lot, a lot of measuring to try to figure out how everything is, is um, actually going to fit together. Um, this is all designed on the fly, so I'm going to do a lot of, a lot of staring. <laughs> staring is good. Sit on a comfortable chair and stare at stuff and you'll figure it out. And then the other thing that I've done tonight is um, I am blessed to own, um, to have invested in a laser cutter. Uh, this is the workhorse of my shop. Um, it cuts all my robot kits. Like this is the little medium tank, right? And uh, here's my little hexapod that I'm working on. And uh, because I have the laser cutter, for the business. Uh, I'm also blessed with it here. For instance, um, I was able to um, be, uh, use some calipers, measure these parts, and then cut these cardboard templates. And what this allows me to do is A, take a physical item, which is exactly the right, exactly the size that I designed, and then physically place it on the, um, the item, and I can actually double check that all of my um, all of my measurements, my designs are actually correct. And then I can also use these when I'm building to actually hold it up and see, you know, if something's going to fit or not. Here's one, um, this one I did for the motor. Fits just right. And, uh, and then all the other parts, like here's the bearing blocks. And, um, I cut one for that as well. So, um, these little guys I think are going to be pretty darn handy. Um, that is basically it. Um, I guess the other last little bit of cool news um, is I got to do something tonight that I've never got, I've never been able to do before, or never had the opportunity to do. This, um, this uh, um, uh, lead screw um, fits through a bearing in there, and then this bearing fits into this bearing block. Uh, the bearing in this bearing block is captured, and but nevertheless, this lead screw needs to go through it. And they were tight. They were wicked, wicked tight. I, I could not get them in, and um, I own an arbor press, and I thought about pressing them in. But instead, I, uh, I actually took the bearing blocks, and I just stuck them on top of our uh, stove. Uh, our, we heat our house with coal. And we have this old 1930s coal stove. And uh, so I set those on top. So they got probably 150, 180 degrees. And then I took the bearings and the lead screw and I stuck them in the freezer. And um, gosh darn it, I got to tell you, it worked well. It worked amazingly well. I've seen it done on, um, sorry, uh, I've seen it done on the building shows on uh, Discovery Channel. And... Um, you know, where they stick it in liquid nitrogen, they, put, they press the bearing in, and, uh, you know, and it, it works. Um, it works. <laughs> it totally works. It just, like, zoop, it slid right in, and it all, you know, cooled down and warmed up, respectively. And um, tried to tie us a drum. It was just, ting, it was, it was perfect. It worked so well. So, um, so that was cool. So, um, as we stand now, more staring at stuff, more designing, but... Uh, but overall, those are the parts that I'm going to build this thing out of, how big they are, what I paid, where I got them. And uh, more can be found at rocketbrandstudios.com. Uh, on the left-hand side sidebar, there's a link to the blog. Um, more videos to come. Ding!